If you're a PCB designer, PCB technologist, or a PCB fabricator, this brief introduction to SpeedStack virtual material mode or library mode explains the differences between the two easy ways of using SpeedStack. There are two ways you can operate SpeedStack, library mode and virtual material mode. The library mode is used mostly by PCB fabricators and PCB technologists who have a good knowledge of board based materials and are ready to build the stack from the materials it's eventually going to be built from in the fabrication process. The virtual material mode is used by designers who are maybe less interested in the actual materials the board will be made out of and use virtual material mode to specify an overall height, a number of layers and the transmission lines required on any layer. You can move from virtual material mode to library mode quite seamlessly and fine tune a stack later on. So virtual material mode is a very good way of making a, a good start to build a stack. If you look while I toggle between virtual material mode and library mode and look at these icons over on the right hand side of the toolbar, you'll see those two icons uh, are enabled and disabled. Those two icons are involved with pressing and finishing and when you're in virtual mode you're designing finish dimensions so there's no need to concern yourself with that. However in library mode you can finish the board and press the raw materials as you take them out of the library. The other thing to note is that when you change between library mode and virtual mode the stack wizard changes its behavior. So in library mode we have a stack that lets you draw in materials from the library And in virtual mode, the stack up has no library materials and simply works with finished dimensions. So now I'm in library in virtual material mode. Let's go ahead and make a stack, eight layers, 1.6 millimeters thick. I've got the dimensions in microns here, and I can set plane layers on two and eight. You note both select there. I've selected symmetrical plane layers and four and five. You can have a nominal dielectric constant for the stack. Here I've got 4.2, add solder mass top and bottom, and you can have a preferred core thickness. Here we've already got 200 microns, but you can select from a number of preferred core thicknesses. Dielectric constant for the solder mask. If you want to have a lower dielectric constant, we can just put that in at 3.5, um, and the copper thickness. And you have a choice of builds. I'll do a foil build. Most boards are foil build. Uh, you can have a core if you're working with microwave boards where you have cores on the outer rather than foil, or you can build sequential and HDI. But here we're just looking at the basic differences between virtual material mode and library mode. So this is a virtual material mode stack. Finish, add any dimensions into the uh, um, stack up properties you'd like to do. In this case, I'll just skip past that. And your stack is now complete. You can add here a transmission line microstrip, apply, done, and calculate the value. Here we've got a 55 ohm transmission line, and if I want to make that hit its target impedance, I can simply goal seek the width, and now we've got the transmission line that we desire. You'll see here on the left hand side, solder mask, foil, prepreg, core, prepreg, core. Um, one of the differences between library mode and virtual material mode is that you can go into any material and the properties, you can change the isolation distance, which allows you to change the thickness of the material. When you're in library mode, the thickness of material is drawn from the library, so you have no control over it. The library dictates the Z height of your stack, whereas in virtual material mode, you're free to experiment until you get the stack roughly right. And then when you've got the stack roughly right for yourself, you can then move into library mode and realize the stack with real materials. To check your stacks roughly right, you can pop up the proportional view and I'll just scale that here. So in proportional view, you can see the foil outers, the cores, and you can see that they're all equally spaced in this automatically generated stack. As an example, I can go into the material properties here, and 
I'll just make this to make it obvious 10 times as big as it should be. Um, let me just rebuild the stack here. Look at proportional view. And now it's very, very clear to see in proportional view that I've altered the size of this. And it's a very good way of checking for any uh, gross errors that you might have made. And if I turn this, the, the ruler on here, I can see that, oh yeah, I had 1800 microns instead of um, instead of a distance of uh, 180 microns. So close, go back, properties, and correct that, apply. So I've added a transmission line, it's 50 ohms. We're now ready to print a technical report and send that technical report to the fabricator for the fabricator to add real materials. So that's virtual material mode. You've got full control over the Z height. You can experiment, you can experiment with a number of layers and you can make a stack which will fit in your particular application, but it doesn't have any real materials in it. Let's switch now into um, library mode and make an empty stack up. Just cancel that. Okay. In library mode, starting the wizard, again, it's very similar. We can make our eight layer board, foil build, but now we bring solder mask in from the library Bring a foil, okay, so last time we had a 35 micron foil, so we can select a 35 micron foil. And a core, last time we had a 200 micron core, so I'll bring in a generic 200 micron core. And pre-preg, well, okay, let's just slip in two sheets of 1080, just uh, for, for demonstration purposes. I'll put plane layers, again, symmetrically on two, four, five, and eight. I can also add a drill, um, and a non-plated drill, apply, okay, and here's the stack up. Looking at the stack up, I get my electrical layer count, cost, copper thickness, dielectric, target stack up thickness, and overall stack up thickness, and here I can see it's a bit thin. So when you're in library mode, it's up to you to uh, add materials I uh, can put this into symmetrical mode. Copy, paste above. Okay, and so by pasting a couple of extra prepregs in, I, I brought the stack up to the, the correct target thickness. Uh, although you should note here, I haven't pressed it yet, so we may have to add some more materials on inner layers to make it the right height when it's finished. The key difference, and it's a subtle one, is when you go into the properties, now the isolation distance is locked and it's locked to the base material which you brought from the library. So when you're working in library mode, you're using real materials and your Z height of the stack is driven by the materials you use and any pressing you may apply to finish the board. In virtual material mode, you've got a free hand to experiment, but in library mode, you're using real materials. And that in short is a, an overview of how library mode and virtual material mode work to run speed stack in two different ways. One, to provide a rough stack up for your fabricator to realize for you. And in library mode, you can have full control of the stack and the materials that go in. Thank you for viewing this short guide to virtual material mode and library mode in speed stack. And if you'd like further assistance, please contact your local office or Polar Care for more information. And you can find your Polar Care contract number on the help about screen in speed stack.